Veteran journalists Casey Sherman and Dave Wedge have written a unique inside look at the Boston Marathon bombings. Now, the book titled Boston Strong, A City's Triumph Over Tragedy is the first book to tell the entire story but through the eyes of those who experience it. Now, currently, the book is also being developed into a major motion picture by Hollywood. Joining us this morning to tell us more about this amazing book is one of the co-authors, Casey Sherman. Casey, nice to have you back at Channel 7. Uh, yeah, my you know, old stomping grounds. I started my career in journalism here uh, about 25, 30 years ago. So to come back now to tell this story, which is so gripping and compelling for not only people that uh, you know, know this area, but for people around the country and around the world. Yeah. Now I mentioned this is a unique perspective because you really took the time to um, to interview and get to know the people who survived it, right? So so the perspective is a is a little different. Absolutely. These aren't just snapshots of what these people experienced that day. But my co-author Dave Wedge and I, we really embedded ourselves into their daily lives. Many of the survivors, many of the law enforcement officials that hunted down the terrorists and followed them uh, through an entire year from the bombing all the way through the first anniversary, saw the sad days, saw the triumphant days, saw how they came together as this incredible support group that continues to support each other now two years after the bombing. Yeah, and we're talking a little off camera of how diverse uh, a range of folks who were connected in one way or another. Oh, a absolutely. You know, you look at the Sarnia brothers, and they're the, they're the worst of the so-called American dream. However, you, you find other pieces of the American dream, like Carlos, Carlos Arredondo, like Mary Daniel. Mary Daniel uh, is a, a survivor that came over from Haiti when she was 15 years old, uh, moved to Brockton, went to U uh, University of Massachusetts on a medical scholarship, brilliant young woman with a passion for her new found country. Here she is on the uh, finish line that day of the bombing. She gets blown off, her f off of her feet. She's literally laying down on the sidewalk and she's thinking, I'm going to die because she's medically trained. She can assess her injuries. She's looking at all of the different people injured around her and thinking to herself, I should be helping them because I do have that training. I can save her, their lives, but here I am, and I don't know if I'm going to make it. She does pull through in an incredible way, and now she's such an inspiration for thousands, if not millions, of people around the world. Yeah. Now, I heard, um, to disclosure, I, I was listening to the radio, and I heard uh, uh, you guys talking about it, and you guys were on that cruise, right, to Fred, six yeah, months yeah, later, it right? Was, exactly. So six months after after the Boston Marathon bombings, a travel company from Boston called Vantage Travel gave over 100 survivors of the marathon an all-expense-paid free trip to Europe. And they just wanted to get this group away from the city, away from their daily memories of what happened, and get them together. And it was, an, um, it was floating therapy is what it was, because these folks came together and they built a support group. Many knew each other from events that they had uh, um, attended, but they really got to know each other over 11 days in France, and they're still best friends today. I heard one of the stories was uh, they were talking about, uh, uh, someone was talking about how someone had helped them, they didn't know who it was, and that person, I guess, was sitting at the same dinner it's, table. It's one of those amazing moments that I'll never forget. It was a, a man named Alan Starr from Lawrence, Massachusetts, yeah. and he's describing why he was actually on the cruise, and he was saying, well, you know, I was at the first bombing site. Uh, I took off my leather jacket. I wrapped it around this young woman who had been bleeding profusely. I didn't get a chance to look at her because she was covered in debris. She was covered in blood, but I knew if I didn't stop that bleeding, she was going to be really, really hurt. So he not only tried to stop that bleeding, but carried her through to the medical tent to medical attention. And at the table at that, uh, on that cruise during that dinner was the girl sh he saved. And she said, that was me you saved out. I love that story. I heard that story. and, and uh, Oh, it brings tears to my eyes it, just it, talking it, about it. Yeah, yeah. And I want to commend you guys for doing such a, a great job. I mean, I know the book is out now, right? Yeah, the book is out now, and it's it's a national bestseller. And it's resonating with audiences because, you know, they it's really about the courage and resiliency of, of all these survivors that have got, you know, gotten through it but, but live day-to-day -day with it and struggle but, you know, 
get themselves up and, and do things that they never deemed possible be, uh, before. Uh, last week during the second anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings, I spent that anniversary with Michelle LaRue. Mm -hmm. Michelle LaRue was a survivor that was uh, uh, critically injured um, at uh, Marathon Sports, the first bombing site. Well, Michelle is now training to run her first Boston Marathon tomorrow. Wow. Wow. Amazing. And um, so you can get the book now. You can get the book now. Every uh, major bookseller, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And as you mentioned, we are now in the process of making this into a, uh, a major feature film for 20th Century Fox in Hollywood. But the story is really going to be about the resiliency and the courage and the heroism of this city we call Boston. Casey, I want to thank you for stopping by. Thank you for thank coming you very by Channel 7 again. I appreciate nice it. Nice to have Thanks. you back. Thank you. You look a little bit older, but you still look good. <laughs> yeah, great hair now. <laughs> All right. When we return, Teddy Bruschi's team is back at this year's marathon, and uh, we're going to introduce you to a family who is really taking this challenge seriously right here on Urban Update.